Hello and welcome to the UK Surf Show. We are your hosts, I'm Pete. And I'm Mitch, and on today's episode, this is the second last one of the Welsh edition, which is an absolute shame, but we chat with Adam from Williams Longboards. Um, yeah, this was a big one for Pete as well. Pete was desperate to go and go and down and chat. I was happy to just chat to somebody that is in the surf industry. <laughs> but <laughs> you know what? The longboards, the longboards were beautiful, and actually it was super interesting as well. Yeah, it was uh, it was a really good one actually. The I saw I met him down at uh, I think it was down in Bude, and they had like a surf meet. I can't remember who put it on now off the top of my head. Um, it was like an eco surf meet and he makes like wooden long boards and they're just mm. absolutely fantastically phenomenal like just just to look <laughs> at they are things of beauty um, we should say thank you to him as well because he let us record with him there and then we did Shaka there as well so uh, yeah thanks to Adam for letting us uh, use his place to record and uh, hosting us uh, but yeah we'll get on with this and we'll come back and chat afterwards yeah let's do it I'm Adam Williams, and I make Williams longboards, primarily longboards and not shortboards. <laughs> There's nothing wrong with that. that. You're already the best person we've spoken to. You're already the best person in this room. <laughs> <laughs> I'm glad you think that. So how, how did you, should we go, like, when did you start surfing and when? how did you get into making longboards? Well, I first started going to the beach and surfing small waves when I was a child with my father. Um, he was making surfboards in the 60s. Yeah. So we sort of grew up down the beach. Um, he had a bad accident in 1972 and it basically all stopped. Yeah. Didn't go to the beach, didn't do anything. He was in hospital for two years. Nothing happened. And then as I got a bit older, some of my friends who lived in the area started going to the beach and surfing. Yeah. They were slightly older than me. Yeah. Um, and I just basically tagged along because I knew I enjoyed it. Yeah. And that would be the beginning of the 80s. Okay. Um, and then just got into it from there. I had a really rubbish shitty board haven't we all <laughs> and i decided i was going to make myself a board how old was this uh i would have been 18 19 okay so i went out the shed and fashioned a board <laughs> <laughs> which at the time was a twin fin yeah a fat twin fin because they were all the rage at the time mm -hmm. and I was just copying what was there. Um, I did a few in the shed and then I borrowed someone's garage and made a few more. And then we had really bad flat summers and we started getting out these old long boards, big heavy bilbos and the like and just taking them in when it was tiny and Mm -hmm. realized this is really good fun yeah so then i decided i was going to make myself a longer board which was not that long at the time because i think the longest blank i could get was seven foot eight so i made myself a longer board and then my dad who hadn't served for years because he'd been struggling with yeah. his mobility and struggling to walk and I'd come down the beach one day and decided he was going to go back in the water. So he went back in and within a couple of weeks, he'd made himself a longboard. <laughs> so then that's where the Williams Longboarding Company originally came okay. from with dad, who then started making boards again. Um, and I was working with him making boards okay so, so that, it developed from there that first board you made yourself had you seen him make boards before so you sort of knew what you were doing or only as a smaller child and ah, when right. i was asking him about it at first he wasn't very keen to <laughs> in case you were better <laughs> no because i i don't it was just something you know we'd had an accident and there were things that had happened and he wasn't keen to 
get back into it at first. When the yeah. student becomes the master. Yeah, and <laughs> I, I had no idea what I was doing. That first ball, you made was that from a, a phone blank or was that? Yeah, I was... bought I bought the phone blank off uh, Roger Cooper. Okay, uh -huh, right. Yeah, Roger um, Cooper. You could go to Roger Cooper and say, "I want to make myself a surfboard," and he'd give you all the stuff to make a surfboard. Amazing. Which is uh, absolutely brilliant, isn't it? Do you um, remember what that cost to do that? Oh, I think it was somewhere around 46 quid. Okay. Fucking hell. <laughs> <laughs> and how did you find the process, though, making that first board? And did it go well, or was it a shocker? No, it was fine. Oh, yeah. Yeah, it was, it was, well, I say that now. I don't know if I'd like to look at it again. Because <laughs> I was, was going to ask if you still got that first board. but uh... No, but I have got a photograph of one I made a year later. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, we'll have to uh, we'll have to see that. Uh, you, you, yeah. I can yeah. show it to you. That's you. Right. <laughs> yeah. So so then so yeah, obviously then so you started surfing young, got into building boards, and what was it? When did you move over to like? Are you just doing wooden boards now, or are you still doing both boards? I I'm trying to concentrate on what I call planet friendly boards. Yeah. Okay. So boards that are not as damaging to the environment, because Basically, foam boards are quite seriously toxic because yeah. of the materials. Yeah. And if you can cut away lumps and lumps of the toxic products that are involved in making a board, mm -hmm. you, you've got to be on to a winner. Yeah. You know, if you can regrow a board in three to four years, it's a win-win. Yeah. Surely. Yeah. Rather than having to have these chemical plants producing seriously toxic stuff that is bad for you when you use it as well, yeah, it's you know it does it doesn't benefit anybody. Yeah. So what are the what are the blanks they're using now? They're diff they're a different type, aren't they? Which is um, for, uh, oh, the guys who did the um, eco echo. Um, yeah. Those are the polyola blanks. Oh, the, now, yeah, so they're a better. They they are better, but I don't think they're quite there yet because it's a thirty percent recycled content. All ah, right, okay. And I know they're increasing the recycled content, which will be great. Yeah. And these things have got to start somewhere to develop. Yeah. But at th at a thirty percent you know, recycled product in there. Yeah. By the time the board is built and you, you know, a lot of people are still glassing them with polyester resin. So you're basically looking at a, a content of somewhere, maybe 15, 20%, you know, yeah. of recycled content in there. Okay. Whereas so you can make a wooden board um, by mass, you, you're looking at sort of, 80% plus yeah. biomass in the board. And so these, there's uh, no comparison. These blanks, do you find any additional issues with them when it comes to shaping them? Or? Uh, they're a bit tougher. Um, not really. No. Um, but I think because I'm in a different position to a lot of people, I'm not coming from just shaping traditional PU foam. Mm -hmm. I'm doing wood, which is way tougher than anything. I'm doing EPS, which is more difficult. So I'm crossing over between all these different okay. types yeah. all the time. And everything I do is hand-shaped as well. And for somebody that doesn't understand the shaping process, what is the differences and challenges? Firstly, shaping a foam blank to then just starting with straight up wood and carving a board. <coughs> Well, the difference is you get a blank, it's pretty much to the shape of the board you're going to make. Yeah. You know, a lot of the time the rocker profiles are pretty close to what you're going to build anyway because you pick a blank that's going to suit the board you're going to make. Yeah. You're basically cutting out the outline and then refining your bottom shapes, your rail shapes to, to suit the board mm -hmm. that you're building. Whereas with the wooden boards... I'm buying in raw timber, which I then got to process into pieces that I can glue together right. to build a blank. 
Yeah. Now I've got to decide what my rocker profiles are going to be, what my thickness distribution is going to be through that, and everything that's involved in that. And the other thing, because of the way I construct my boards, they're a close tolerance blank. Right. So what that means is you can't go too far off script shaping it if somebody suddenly turned around and said, oh, I want it two, three inches shorter, can't do it because you've already built your yeah, rocker no. profile and everything oh, into yeah. it and you haven't got that adjustment that you could do with the foam. Yeah. So that's on the wooden board shaping, you say it says about 80% uh like recyclable or bio content in bio the board content. Yeah. yeah and then is that is, do you think in circle making that's about as high as you can get it, it, it could it do you, could it go higher or is that it can go higher because there are certain things that are in process at the moment and that's the things that are bringing those um numbers down at the moment are if you're using glass and if you're using an epoxy resin, what the bio content is mm -hmm. on the epoxy resin. Yeah. But the new bio epoxies, they, they're getting up into the mid 40s, 50% of bio content. Yeah. And you use so little, it doesn't really add to the, yeah. to the actual overall percentage of the board. And the, the glass is the other one, but. There are products that are available now that are grown. You know, we've got the flax, we've got the hemp. Yeah. We've also got products um, like green light, which is basically um, a cellulose fiber um, derived fabric, similar to lyosil or tensile. So that is also an eco fabric that can be used in place of glass. Yeah. Okay. So and when you said about like um, glass in the boards and I was saying about, you know, dents on the top of it mm. and you've shown me boards in here that have been surfed hundreds of times and there's literally, there's no, you, you can see no dents or anything on it. And that you said with the, is that the glass in process that, that makes them stronger? And with, with the wooden boards, it's the resilience of the timber. Yeah. The, th the timber's so tough to begin with. The, the only reason you're putting glass on it is to waterproof it. Yeah. It, that's the only reason you're putting the resin and glass on there is to waterproof it. Yeah. And the thing I was surprised by, I think I picked up this board back here, having picked up Pete's long board earlier to oh, shift you've it. You've always I, just got to diss me, haven't you? I, Every I, single I episode. I can barely move it. I needed like three other people to help. And I, I'm blown away with how light that is. That's what, 10, 10, 2, 10, 1, did you say? 10, 1, yeah. And it literally just felt like a mid-length I was picking up. Yeah, it's crazy yeah. light. I would assume. I would have thought. Sorry, with wood, it would be heavier. It, it's the process of building them mm -hmm. because the way I'm building the boards is completely different to everybody else's. Okay, there's, there's, I don't know of anybody that is building this type of board in this way. Most, do you want to elaborate on that, or do you want to keep that to yourself? <laughs> no, it's. It, I, I call it a wing blank construction, right. but it's something I of basically made up a way of doing it because i didn't have a computer i didn't have a cnc machine i didn't have all this technical equipment yeah and i wanted to be able to put something together by hand and this was the obvious way for me to do it ah uh, right so what's the like we were talking before about the difference in like the difference in boards and like people saying wooden boards they are they're so much heavier and you know your replies they don't have to be they can be lighter and it all depends on material so what like is there a certain type of wood you use is there well the the wood i'm using is balsa yeah um, Do you have to license balsa wood i remember somebody telling me this years ago i had a balsa wood shortboard which thanks to ryanair got smashed up on a flight and it's now just a beautiful display piece but somebody told me you have to have a license to work with balsa wood no, shit, no, it's it's shit. all um, all the stuff I get though is um, it's all certificated. 
Right. It's it's um, uh, the balsa I get in now is part of a forest uh, reforestation scheme. Okay. Yeah. So they go into an area, they bomb it with balsa seed where it's been clear cut for grazing or palm oil or farming, um, and they just go into that area, bomb it with balsa seed. It grows really rapidly. Within three months, it's about six foot tall. Um, And what that does then, it allows the under canopy to start to develop. Right. Um, Within three to four years, it's somewhere in the region of 15, 20 meters tall. Um, They go in, crop it out. All the under canopy has started to develop and Mm -hmm. take over. And the rest of the forest then, because all the soil is being tied back in and it's... you haven't got the problems yeah. with erosion. Okay. The rest of the forest can start to redevelop then. Amazing. Amazing. And is it cheap material to work with? It's not cheap. No, it's not cheap. <laughs> <laughs> Bloody hell, it's not cheap. <laughs> so what, like, cost-wise from, uh, say, you're buying a uh, wooden board or, you know, a, mine's gone blank completely. So say say you're buying a wooden board, how's, how different is the cost from a wooden board to a, shop bought or handmade board it's, it's not that much difference at, at the moment i'm still doing say a nine six balsa board at 1500 pound yeah which that's is not not that much difference it's not to like that a much mass different produced board when you've got other people that are doing wooden boards that are double treble that yeah yeah and in terms of um taking my money <laughs> <laughs> okay <laughs> in terms of lifespan of a, a wooden board is that would you expect that to have a longer lifespan than that yes yeah a lot longer at least three times longer oh really yeah yeah okay well th- l- as i said the oldest one i've got now is 11 years old and it has no damage yeah. it's never been repaired and it's been surfed it had 748 surfs. It's been to Spain. It's been to France. It's been all over the place. It's Just been, not on Ryanair. <laughs> it's been off the roof of the van. That's yeah. it. Yeah. You know, it, zip your board bag up. But... Um, <laughs> That's an interesting... Wait, yeah. wait, 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 wait. wait. <laughs> so what? It shot straight out the back? No, I was getting the board off the roof. Right. And I hadn't zipped the bottom of the board bag up, and I had oh. the nose of the board bag and the. Oh, in my head, you're driving the motorway. <laughs> no! strapped on, but somehow it's. Oh, out no, the bag. It, it, it wasn't that much of an impact. It would, right. you know, and it did land on the grass, but it had a bit of a clunk. Yeah. Like but there's been a lot of broken boards at your board's mercy. I did have one um, a while ago that had come off a roof at 70 miles an hour and hit the central reservation. How did that go? It was all right. <laughs> That's Imagine I mean, yours. What a testament. The, the, <laughs> other, the other boards that were on there, the foam boards, were, well, they're in a skip. Yeah. yeah. I was going to say, you hit your board with a tea bag and it dents. It's, that, yeah. It's yeah. I, d- I did, um, I just, there was a big chunk out of the rail where it hit the central reservation. Yeah. Um, and it was just, Cut a piece out, scarf a piece in, glass it over. It took them seven hours to fix the central reservation. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> From the board. <laughs> but, it, yeah, very, you know, I don't get a lot of them back for repair. Yeah. It's it's a, it's, it's not really a, a problem with them. And I assume that suggests then that, and I'm right in saying that all your boards are made to order, real custom. Yeah. 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 The majority of them. Okay. I do one or two now and again, um, if I've got a bit of time. Yeah. Which I don't have. <laughs> <laughs> so so they, yeah, basically they're, okay. they're mainly custom. And you see a lot where do you see these boards mostly? Is it round here or do you see them when you travel? Um I would say more of them go away than around here. Oh, Not many right? people ride them around here. Really? Why do you yeah. think that is? 
I don't know. They don't like him. <laughs> <laughs> Simple as that. <laughs> I, don't I, I don't know. <laughs> what a salesman. <laughs> yeah. Oh, you could buy it or not, whatever. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> People are skinned. I don't know. <laughs> oh, amazing. So, like, what about your own surfing? You said you started surfing at a young age. Yeah. So when when did this become like, actually, I'm surfing all the time? and um, pr- um, Probably when I was... A t- you know, late teens. Yeah. Yeah. Did that come naturally to you? I suppose. I, I don't know. I, I've never really thought about it. That's an interesting question. It's funny well, I've never thought about it, so... It's, it's one of those yeah. that you've always just done it, sort of yeah. thing. Yeah. It's, it's not... Mm. Yeah, it's not alien. It's not... Um, I didn't think, oh, this is hard. This is difficult. It was enjoyable. Yeah. I'm so, still thinking it's difficult and hard. Oh yeah, I do. I do bit. think it's hard and it's difficult now. <laughs> yeah. It's, it's yeah, but I do think that it's it's just one of those things that's it's almost always been there. Yeah. Okay. And you're surfing mostly down down the road here, yeah. Rosilly. Yeah. I don't like going too far. No. Yeah. No. What's the furthest you have surfed then? If oh, um, respite. No. <laughs> Um, Australia and Maldives and, okay. you know, all, all the normal... So you certainly travelled enough. Oh, yeah. But... Do you enjoy them spots or when you surf abroad and... Yeah. Yeah. I do, I do like a good long point break. Uh, yeah, fair. <laughs> I've, got, I've got to say, a good point break is my favourite type of wave, okay. especially for a long board. Yeah, okay. And uh, I think you've got one of them around here, is that right? I mean, you don't have to mention it. I'm, I'm yeah. not. I'm not saying anything. <laughs> well, maybe you don't. <laughs> maybe you do. I, maybe I'm. Don't. I'm wondering which one you're on about. <laughs> we'll, 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 uh, we'll, we'll talk about it afterwards. Then. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> there's a lot of. There's a lot of in, on the whole of the Welsh trip that we've done. There's a lot of people that won't say anything, and as soon as we shut the cameras and microphone off, they go, "Well, actually, it's right here." Like, right. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Because you know, there there are a few places that people are still. They're not keen for you to show a wide angle shot of it. Yeah. Which is fine. Yeah, yeah no, that's Be- because it is getting so crowded everywhere. Yeah. I think we've we had this conversation quite a few times, but like with the introduction of like Google Maps and stuff like that, you can see the whole coastline. You don't have to walk it anymore, you don't have to drive it and like you can go, Oh, that looks like that might work and go there. Yeah. But at the same time, we always have this conversation of if you've put the legwork in, yeah, you've seen it on Google Maps, but then you've gone there and checked it out and, you know, do you think you should be able to go there? But then you don't want people there because, like, all these spots as well, the other hand, on, on with that, you've put the legwork in, you should be able to go and surf there. Hand in hand with that is you're not at a beach where there's a lifeguard or there's someone watching out for you, so you are on your own out there as well. So it's a lot more dangerous. I I I quite like the fact of just, buggering off somewhere on my own and going for a surf mm. yeah i do, i'm i'm not a fan really of going surfing with people yeah yeah it's, it's yeah it's, I, I i will just yeah no no fair it is dip off on experience. my own um and i do surf when i go to other places i would much prefer to be on my own rather than in a group yeah if i haven't surfed there before because you don't. You never have any problems if you're on your own. Yeah. Well, there is that, isn't there? Yeah, that's an interesting point. <laughs> because you just turn up. Do you know what? That's quite fair. Because this week I've been with him, and all I've had is problems. He's <laughs> <laughs> got. Has he just got a problematic face? This <laughs> is taking a ton. <laughs> <laughs> this is brilliant. This is the best episode ever. I'm going to follow you to every lineup. This show's not you and your own. Yeah, but I do. But I, do, I do think if you if you just turn up somewhere, yeah, and you're on your own, just quietly go about what you're doing you never have a problem yeah fair fair because i know I, I think places like that places where they do want to keep them quieter mm. one person turning up their own is different than a group of people piling out of a van or a yeah. car and going well, like you no, know but still that group of people piling out in a van they they deserve to be surfing that spot as much as anyone like i think the point is let's not 
blow up the spot. And like you said, let's not be putting shots on it. On Wide a angle shots like that, that yeah, everybody yeah, can sure. work out where it yeah. is. Yeah. Yeah. If somebody's gone to the hassle of, uh, you know, you said Google Maps, but I would have used Apple Maps because it's more reliable and less terrorist like <sighs> harvesting your data. It's <laughs> an ongoing joke, don't worry. Um, but if somebody's gone to that effort to find it and looked at swell directions and found everything they need to know and they've made it there, they can surf it. As far as I'm concerned, that's yeah. up to them. Those but the, the, but the only problem, you don't want to see them on their phone going, oh, it's great over here. Come, oh, go, no, totally. or everyone get down but here. I think, I think, though, regardless of who mm. that person is that's surfing, whether it be a uni surf club or whatever, any day that surfs is, we're all selfish. We don't want to blow it up because we don't. nobody wants more to, more people there than no. taking your wave. So I don't necessarily think people would. Maybe they would make like, oh, there's a, a decent wave here. Come around here. But I can't imagine anyone messaging and saying oh by the way yeah. tell everyone but so like i ev- think you're looking at that as through your eyes our, all our eyes as a surfer who knows that of going yeah i want to go to that spot and you know i, I found a spot i'm not going to tell people because if you found a spot you wouldn't be telling people about it you'd be like maybe a few mates where you'd go oh you want to try this yeah, you don't but you wouldn't be it. telling everybody no, but no, the difference I, is people who surf who i wouldn't it's not not calling them surfers, but like, I wouldn't call them surfers who are like really into it that much, or they can surf. Do you know what I'm trying if to say? Like that, if they're into it enough to go find brand new spots which are new to them that they've only found via maps. Yeah, but not that. Companies. Like if it, if they've seen it somewhere and they've gone, oh, we'll go there and like this. Do you know what I'm trying to get at? Shut like, up. <laughs> you know what I'm trying anyway. to get out. <laughs> I would say there are there are still places you can go. I I know a few little places that I've been, and I've only ever seen two or three other people there. Yeah, um, I know. They they are, they're not where you'd expect, and they're difficult to find. And I know some in West Wales like that, which is uh, the I've been there a few times. In bad weather, there's been waves, and I've only seen like one or two people out. And I'm thinking, mm. well, obviously this is a place to come. And then the tide goes out. Oh, okay, I'm not fucking surfing over that. <laughs> See, it's yeah. funny because I, I surf on my own quite a lot, and I don't just mean on my own as I go myself. I mean there's no one else in the mm. water all all the time. And I, I I don't push myself as much because I know if I hurt myself, nobody's coming. So it's kind of a funny one. Like I totally get the that peaceful bliss it's just mine but and then there's the other thing of i just caught an amazing wave and no one saw it <laughs> nobody could v- verify it happened but that's the thing why does everyone want to verify things happen now it's like mm. oh if you didn't take a photo if you d- you don't have this this sort of social media presence and you it's not on instagram it didn't happen yeah well i'm i'm really glad we didn't have this sort of 40 years ago because Basically, things happen that <laughs> never, never, ever should be published. I <laughs> see oh, so your reason is different. It's more about guilt than it is about. <laughs> no, it's just you know the, these things are. It's it's quite strange how people seem to need to legitimise what they're doing now, yeah. rather than just being happy with just what they're doing the for themselves and enjoying it themselves. Yeah, no, yeah. for sure. But it is at the same time. You know, I, I totally agree with what you say. At the same time, it's very much a shared experience in the lineup. Like, I'm a very friendly surfer. I like chatting mm. to people, and somebody I don't know just gets an amazing wave. I'll I'll compliment on that yeah. wave. So I think that element of it, that's kind of what I'm getting yeah. at. Like I want to know somebody saw it, and it's like I don't. We don't need to speak about it. I just need to know that you saw me get it. <laughs> that's all I like. I'm, I'm yeah, I'm quite different. You know, we've got a few spots around here where you've got a load of guys with cameras mm. all the time. I I just I'll just avoid it. Yeah. Or if I see it, I'll go. So you must be well comfortable doing this then. <laughs> 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 so what are the what are the ways what are the ways you've seen surfboards and surf design change over the years from like especially like from the eighties when you start into like now? What's the biggest changes you've seen in that? The biggest changes really are sort of around the mass market. Yeah. You know, the, the huge amount of stuff that's just being turn, turned out by these factories now. Mm-hmm. It's absolutely ridiculous because you used to just go and get a board made or you'd get one off the rack and there would be maybe 
half a dozen in a rack in a shop. Yeah. You know, if a shop had half a dozen boards in there, it was like, oh, they got a lot of stuff in <laughs> yeah. here. And now if they haven't got 50, 60, 100 boards, yeah. it's like, oh, you know, what's going on here? Yeah. yeah. So there's that. And it's just the relentless media pressure to have this certain type of board or product it's just relentless advertising really yeah. it's mass marketing gone mad yeah okay. and what about in the sort of the, the design of the boards and the the products used to make them what's what's changed in that over the well a lot a lot of things are very similar the you know the foam the polyester resin and the glass are basically the same there's no difference there they've refined them more yeah. Um, a few little technical differences, but really not a lot. You know, y- you you could go and just use the same products and you'd come up with a very similar, you know, finished article now. Yeah. yeah. Um, the things that have made the biggest difference, fins. You know, this bollocks of people selling boards without fins, I think is absolutely appalling. Yeah. Because... You can't use the board without fins. Yeah. yeah. Back in the 80s, there weren't fin boxes. All boards came with fins glassed in. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You know, or end of the 70s into the 80s, and then, you know, you had people like multi-fins starting with their boxes and things like that. You, you'd had boxes for some of the long boards, but they weren't the most common thing. Glassed on fins were the thing. Yeah. So now, when you... When and all the boards I sell all have fins. Yeah. And people come in and they, they pick up their board and go, oh, I, want, a bu- I want, a, want fins. And I'm like, well, well you've got fins. And yeah, they look yeah, at yeah. you a bit stupid. They're like, really? Yeah. And it's like, yeah, yeah, you shouldn't be buying a board without fins. And an interesting thing I did was I emailed Firewire. Yeah. Oh, can I mention other people's yeah. stuff? Yeah. <clears throat> and ask them what fins they would suggest for a certain board. And they told me it was my preference. Now, if they're building a board, the shaper who designed and made that board must have had fins in mind for the board. Yeah, right. Yeah. You know, because it it's... It's one of those things. If you're making a board, you know what fins you're going to put in it. Yeah. What position you're going to put the fins in. You know, the cant, the, the angles and everything mm-hmm. is important. But they were just like his personal preference. And, well, I could be putting completely wrong fins in that board that made it go like a dog and they didn't care. Yeah, yeah, for yeah. sure. Or you could put it in backwards. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I, this had never actually crossed my mind before. Not being really somebody from the longboard world, um, it's not just we, longboards, but it's shortboards no, no, as for well. Sure, but I mean the, the whole principle of it and the concept. And it was Ben Skinner when we were chatting to Ben, and that he, he was chatting about that exact same thing about you know he makes a board and has a, f- a fin made for that board. Yeah, and actually it was a sort of light bulb thing. I thought that, actually that makes a lot of sense. Obviously you, you want to have different fins for different types of waves for that board. Yeah. But for that person, for that what board was made to do, yeah, it makes yeah. absolute sense that that happened. That's I was gonna I was gonna ask on that on the on the personal preference, like it's up to you. So, like people say on fins, with you know you've got like your nose rider fin, you've got your all rounder fin, you've got mm. your so you, the different fins you've got. That personal preference should that be taken into account before. You even buy the board then, because you should, you should be talking to your shaper, or if you're getting one off the shelf or whatever, and saying, actually, I just I want a nose ride. I want to be able to do big turns. You know, whatever you want to do, that should be taken into account before the board, because the fin and the board should already be married up together. Yeah, well, it's it's all the same thing. It's 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 all one thing. Yeah. So it all has to be taken into account at the same time. So if if you if you're building a nose rider like this, 
you put you put a fin in it that's appropriate for the board. Yeah. You know, it, it's it, if you're building a glider, you put a fin in it that's appropriate for the board. Yeah. And it's it is quite a personal thing, but having said that, that board over there, I rode it for ten years, and I put a fin in it, and I never adjusted the fin. Yeah. It just stayed in there. Wait, well, that's ten years old. That's eleven years old. I just thought that was something that was for sale. Somebody was waiting to pick up. That's <laughs> <No>. pristine. <laughs> that's what I was saying <laughs> earlier. Hell? I genuinely thought that was just something somebody was coming to pick up. No. <laughs> that was the first wow. wooden board I put together. Amazing. Do you know what? Yeah. I've seen some other people's first wooden boards and they don't look anything like that. <laughs> <laughs> so the the fin thing is and then I'm so now my boards I don't even put a box in them because no. I know what fin I want. I know where they're going and I can just pick up a bit of scrap off the floor and make a fin. Yeah. Yeah, okay. As this one, which which is just, it's just a bit of rubbish off the floor. Is it? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and glass it in, it's done. Okay. These are broken skateboard decks. That's mad, isn't it? That is, that's, that's a great way to be, you know, sustainable, recyclable. They look amazing as well. Is that I a straightforward do. process to do as well? Yeah. Love that. It's, uh, I like the surprising yeah, what you can you do can, with a bit can, of glue. Yeah. I tell you what, you can tell someone that's the, that's good at their craft and know what they're doing because he's like that. To me, that would be impossible to make. Is it easy You're like that? No, yeah, piece of piss. Piece of piss. <laughs> <laughs> well, the blue board there, the board with the blue rails. Yeah, that's all made from scrap. So well, the whole sh- thing's just scrap. It's your open trolley, mate. <laughs> <laughs> I like I like the it's fact that you're saying, saying with this place as well. Like have this have you seen the bottom of the board? Uh, no. If you look at the bottom of the board, you'll see it's a load of pieces all glued together. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Symmetrically, though. That's amazing. I love that. And was that always from the kind of... From your start point when you made that first board, was it always that you wanted to try and have a sustainable mind or recyclable? No, mind? didn't really think about it back back in the you know in the early days, yeah. and then you know we, we carried on and made boards into the early nineties, and then various things happened, and we didn't carry on making boards, and then I went back to making furniture, and mm-hmm. um, so I was working as a cabinet maker. Um, and I thought about making a wooden board and it never, it never sort of happened. I kept thinking, oh, I could, I could make a wooden board. And I was seeing people sort of starting to make wooden boards about, I don't know, 25 years ago again. And yeah, I was thinking, oh, I could do that. And, but I never got around to it. And then 11, 12 years ago, a friend of mine came to me and said, oh, I've got a couple of balsa blanks. I was like, all right, oh, do you want to shape one? Cause, cause he, and he'd asked other people who make boards, and they were like, oh, I'm not, I'm not doing that. Okay. And he said, you know, because you used to make boards, and now you do, you're doing all the furniture and the cabinetry. Do you, you know, would you shape one? I was like, no, I don't want to do it. And he said, I'll give you one of the blanks. I was like, oh, okay, I'll have to go. <laughs> if I have to. <laughs> if I have to, for, force my hand. Yeah. I'll, I'll have a go at this. So I started doing it, shaping it, this balsa blank, and I thought... He got the test one, you got the finished product. <laughs> I, I thought I can, I can do this better. And two weeks later, I'd made that one. <laughs> yeah, that is a lovely board. I mean, I saw that when we were down in Bude at the uh, Expo. Expo down there. Mm. And uh, there wasn't much surfing to be had down there that weekend, to be honest. It was a bit blown out, wasn't it? <laughs> yeah, it was. Oh, see, it, was it was one of those well, sideways. Mo- Monday was good, though. Yeah, <laughs> I, yeah, I went home on the on the Monday on the Sunday though, but yeah, I saw that then, and that was the first time I'd met you and and seen the boards and uh, the same thing. That just looks, it looks like the type of board. What well, it looks like if you were going to make it, it looks like furniture. Like, 
I'm not saying that in a, it looks like furniture, like it looks like yeah. a table, but it looks like it looks like a, a high quality finished yeah, piece of it. furniture. Mm. And with that, you think I'm going to pick that up, and it's going to weigh an absolute ton. And I remember you just being pick it up, and I was like, "There's nothing to it. No. There's nothing to it. Yeah. It's just so light, and it's they're absolutely incredible boards." So it it's strange because I've sort of come around to making the wooden boards in a roundabout way because I used to make surfboards yeah. with my fa- I made you know a couple of boards, then I made boards with my father. Um, and um, we had, you know, quite a successful business and it, it went quite well and then it didn't. And then I went back to making furniture. So I've got a different skill set coming into making the wooden boards than a lot of people who were just, oh, I'm going to make a wooden board. Because yeah. they probably haven't made surfboards or yeah. they haven't got the cabinetry skills. Yeah, because yeah, right, okay. so, the cabinet, so I've got cabinet's a... all about the finish, isn't it? You yeah. Know, it's, it's, yeah. And you can see by that, it's all about the finish. Like, I think I've seen people that have made wooden boards, and I'd say they look more homemade than handmade. Um, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> on some of them. Nice. Yeah. It's just some of them I've seen, I'm like, whoa, what's that? <laughs> <laughs> and, um, yeah, it's just the you can just see the amount of time that's been spent on the finishing and detail on on that board and like with the colours and everything like that. We'll put some pictures. We'll overlay some pictures of these so people can uh, know what we're talking about and see what we're talking yeah. about. What's so, your go-to if you when somebody comes and asks for a board? If if you don't know if it, you know, I'm, I'm more than as bad. Do you prefer making wooden boards <laughs> or traditional boards? I'd prefer to make the wooden ones. Yeah, because when when I made the, f- the first wooden ones people said to me oh what well, you know do, do you want to make a wooden board this as good as a foam board mm-hmm. and i said no i want to make it better yeah yeah fair yeah. Which, which and they, they're like oh yeah yeah okay but and it's not about making this is the other thing i'm not making a wooden surfboard this is what people don't understand I'm making a surfboard that just happens to be made of wood. Yeah, yeah I think that's the thing. People just so I'm on that looking board. at it in a slightly different way to other people because I want to make a surfboard. It just happens that the material I chose was wood, mm. rather than people making a wooden surfboard and then coming out with excuses when it's not quite as refined or quite as well put together as maybe a foam board yeah and they say oh yeah but it's wood yeah yeah that's but, not an excuse so i mean on these could you then could you then color them like to any color you wanted with the wood obviously the same as like i'm not saying painting it but you know yeah make it any color you wanted before you glassed it and to be honest with the look of some of them if that was like if that was like red or blue or something like that, you probably wouldn't even realise from here that it was no, a wooden board. No, I've I've, I've done coloured ones. I think you're next to one there that's got some the yellow. One. No, the, this one here next to the blue one, this got some yellow and blue yeah. stripes on it. Yeah, you know stuff like that. It's it's not a problem to do it, but the majority of people want it to be looking as a wooden board. Yeah, and what on question of boards? What's your what board have you made? Have you got one in mind that you think that's it? That's that's perfection. Uh, no, I haven't got there <laughs> yet. Still, have you? I'm still. still <laughs> I'm. I'm always. Mm. Well, all right, uh, on so that that board was great because I rode it for ten years. Yeah. Never really thought about, and then I was like, oh, I probably do need to do. So I sort of upgraded it. Yeah. Um, it's a bit more refined this one it's a little bit lighter it's and obviously my skills have improved yeah. during that time so in my mind it is a bit better yeah um, and then I do think oh well I could do this I could do that but then the board that's made of all the bits mm-hmm. It's great. <laughs> Honestly, it's one of those boards and everybody that rides it just thinks this is I don't know why. 
It's just one of those ones. <laughs> it's a magic board. It's, it's one it of those. From here, it looks like a pretty flat board from here as well, is it? No, it's not. Is it not? From here, no. it looks like pretty flat. You said, um, you know, and obviously this would happen, your skills improved over the years. In terms of that coming into actual practice and, you know, making that board better into that one, is that, I don't know much about shaping, but your skills improving, does that relate to the shape of the board? Because I presume your carpentry skills are still as good as ever and improving as you go on. But in terms of, is it more about the shape of the board and understanding what it's doing in the water? Yeah, they, they, there are improvements with the, it's basically a lot to do with the bottom shape on the boards as well, where I've developed a different bottom shape because with the wooden boards, they can be slightly heavier. Like that would be probably slightly heavier than a foam board. Yeah. So what you need to do then, you can compensate for the maneuverability in the board Yeah. by being able to generate the right flow across the bottom of the board by the by the bottom contours yeah yeah and it's surprising how much difference you can make with a board by developing the bottom contours in them yeah and i do see a lot of boards and i think oh maybe they're over rockered they've got too much concave in them and because we've got these slow fat slushy waves we do need a much more almost blended, smoother, less exaggerated mm. yeah. bottom contours to be able to cope with the waves that we've got. Yeah, that's that's a fair comment actually. I never thought of that like that. Um what on the side of on the shaping side of that then of saying what you know, people coming to you and saying this is what I want, this is what I want to be able to do. And you go in, yeah, that ain't going to work for you. <laughs> That's... Well, what I do, I just tell them to go and take one of these boards and try it. Yeah. Yeah. I do loads of demos. Because when I was first doing the wooden boards, couldn't get anyone to buy them. Yeah. So the only way to get the, them basically through the door was to say, try this one, see what you think. Yeah. Um, and I found that to be a massive benefit. And I'm still quite surprised that more people don't do it. Mm -hmm. I can understand why they don't do it, because there is a cost involved with it. You do get damage. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but I think the benefits far outweigh the, oh, the negatives. Yeah. Because I did stuff on the weekend with the... Um, with Shaka Surf and Daughters of the Sea magazine. Yeah. And the girls borrow the boards. They try them. But the other thing that does as well gives me really good feedback. Yeah, I bet, yeah. Yeah. It's great. And if somebody says, I don't like it, sometimes that's actually better than them going, oh, I really like that. And you say, well, why did you like it? Yeah. And yeah. they can't tell you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, success is where, a losing where, teacher. Whereas people say, oh, I didn't like that. Why didn't you like mm -hmm. it? And they say, oh, well, it was a bit this, it was a bit that, and that's what I didn't like about it. And yeah. then you sort of think, oh, right, okay, we'll put that in there for, no, you know. Definitely. I mean, praise is amazing. Who doesn't want praise? But at the same time, there's nothing to be learned from no. praise at all. Yeah. No, it's, 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 it's almost, it's negative. Yeah, yeah enough. Yeah, yeah. You, you, that's why I always tell you you're brilliant. <laughs> 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 yeah. <laughs> um, and he's always calling you crap. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, that's it. Yeah. I've got a lot to learn. Yeah. That's why. <laughs> what is the kind of feedback you get back from people trying wooden boards for the first time? <laughs> it's usually quite positive. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. People are always surprised. Mm-hmm. They're always quite shocked. Uh, it's not what they're expecting. Yeah, okay. Do they, do they, most people, I, I think myself included, would expect going into the sea with a wooden board, it's going to behave or act differently. Oh, it does. And then they go, oh, it is different, but it's not as different as no. I thought it was going to be. The, the, the biggest comment I get, I get the most of anyway is they're really surprised how lively they are. Yeah. Okay. Because 
for some reason they you get them in the water and they do feel alive right yeah they're not they you you never never get anybody say because i've picked up boards other people's boards and tried them you take them in the water and they just feel dead yeah it's hard to explain but it's like oh what see that's what you say about longboards isn't it you always no, feel like I longboards are my, dead it's my, so i bought a longboard just to have one and you know use it on different days maybe use it on smaller days or use it if i'm feeling tired not to say it's for tired people at all but not knowing anything about longboards at the time not that i know much more now i didn't know what to buy so i just bought a nine one firewire timber tech because it looked cool and no other reason looked nice but without realizing what that actually is is a performance longboard it's got as much rocker as my short boards yeah and I can't catch waves on it. It's yeah. horrendous. You hear a shot on it in February up in Fraser, bruh. Hated it. You used it as firewood the next day. <laughs> and, you know what? <laughs> well, it's not actually a wooden board, is no. it? No, It's just no. a thin veneer. Um, it was more the, yeah, the, the sort of more longboard aspect of it. But having jumped on your longboard on Monday here, mm. it was effortless because the whole board was in the water. It was yeah. it was almost a no arm takeoff. And I was like, oh, this is actually... Didn't want to carry it back up the beach, oh, though, no, did you? <laughs> No, no <laughs> that's another thing people with it you know with it the um long boards as well people say oh i don't want to paddle it out when it's big you know I enjoy that. thank they, you you're, i know you're gonna go with this you're about to counter his argument for me and they say oh i can't duck dive it you don't need to duck dive it exactly. you, you because you paddle so fast exactly thank you you oh, you, you just you know, no, you, you can you. you can just shoot through in a lot of exactly. places, apart from down here, which is the most horrendous paddle out <laughs> anywhere. It's like being on That's... a motorbike. You're just yeah. so fast. We're, it's funny that came so up you know in this chat last night. Yeah, day. but what was the day? It was We were in Newquay, and it was like six or eight foot. The white water was like three foot on its own, and I'm trying to paddle out through it. I paddled out in it, all, and in all fairness, you turned around and went, huh, didn't think you'd make it out here with, on that. Eventually. Eventually. Uh, Still got out there. Yeah, no, but I was like, man, <laughs> yeah. but you've, you were like, yeah, but you can duck dive. Yeah. Like, yeah, but you can go four hundred miles an hour. <laughs> yeah, it's it's a it is a big sort of um, thing that puts a lot of people off. It is this? Oh, I don't think I could get it outside. Mm. Well, a lot of places it's not a problem. Yeah. Some some of the beach breaks here are horrendous. Yeah, but you go anywhere else in the world, it's a piece of cake. I think the thing is with the, the with the longboard to make it out the back. The difference is, I think. Often you've got to paddle smarter, not harder, where you've got to wait longer for that flat spot and go then and like really paddle it rather than continually just paddle against what's just pounding Yeah, but there, there are waves of, ways of getting through the waves. Oh, yeah, they? yeah. You know? It's, but it's, yeah, I think I think when I see when I go like when I go out of view, you'll just go out and paddle out, and you you just knowingly you can just go yeah. duck diving through everything. Where often I'll wait there and wait for a little bit of a lull and go like go now and then go through that i know it's yeah. going to be easier to get through on the longboard there's going to be less to do because even if you've got a like turtle roll or you know whatever you're doing to get out through there it's a lot more effort yeah to get out on those things but as you say you can when, once you start paddling if we're next to each other i'm 50 meters ahead of you before you've even yeah. took your third stroke you know do um do you make short boards no really no no I do, I do the odd one now and again like a fish or a simmons or mm -hmm. something like that for somebody specific okay but i don't really like doing them because i don't surf them so i do yeah. and i do think that if you're making boards you need to be making the boards that you're surfing because there are so many people that are making boards that they don't surf themselves yeah it's soulless yeah he said well, he, he said he doesn't that. like it's because you you don't get the <laughs> you don't get the connections with the boards you're making yeah. you, you're not putting in those little things that you've learned over time about the way the board will ride if if you know the bottom shape is like this or the rail shape is like that yeah, yeah. it's it's uh you know See, it's, it's one of those things you i think you've got to be using the product that you're making yeah you've got to be able to stand behind it and say this does this because i know it does because i do it yeah okay yeah yeah well, you know, I was just going to come in and say he doesn't yes. like short borders, so that's why he doesn't make them, which, anyway. I but, haven't got a problem with short ah, borders. Ah, just, right just, say, just say it's, that. It's just 
you know, you know, it's everyone. We're all inclusive. Each, each, side of the room here, each, too. each their own of their own life choices, isn't it? You know, <laughs> <laughs> but so like, like one of the things we often ask as well, which is said to you, is like, you know, you've been surfing for a long time, obviously, and what is one of the best waves or worst wipeouts or and worst wipeouts you can remember having? Ooh, best waves. Probably Lafatine here in France when it's on. Yeah. Yeah. I think I think just because it's that big, hefty point break and it's a it's just a lovely wave on a longboard. Yeah. You know, you can surf it double head height on a longboard, which you can't do a lot of in a lot of places yeah. and it's just it's just a blast yeah but but it's got to be a big point break for me yeah okay yeah those would be but good size as well yeah yeah and what about the uh the worst worst experience or worst wipeout in the surf I think that was France as well <laughs> <laughs> someone that doesn't want to surf and travel <laughs> <laughs> yeah what happened? I'd swapped over a board with somebody and I hadn't put the leash on and a wave came and I took off on it and it was, it wasn't massive. It was probably, well, a good sort of solid six to eight foot, but it was breaking in quite shallow water. I had a pair of shorts on and just um, a thin neoprene top. And I wiped out and I got hit. And as I went basically over the falls, I hit the sand, which wasn't good. The board got obviously blown away somewhere. But the top I had on filled up with water because it had come through the bottom of it. Right. And basically filled the whole thing with water. And I was just stuck to the sand. <laughs> oh, <no. laughs> That's a new one. <laughs> I've never experienced anything, but that was awful because I couldn't do, I couldn't move. Jeez. <laughs> because the the arms were full of water, the whole body of it was mm. full of water, and it stretched to about double the size, or it seemed like that. And I honestly could not move. <laughs> I've never held that one. No. That's definitely a and new the, one. the only thing I managed to do in the end was I managed to pull my arm back and I got it through the bottom and pulled it off over my head and then I came up. Jeez. And it was super shallow as well, though. Yeah, I was getting pounded. <laughs> I, I, I had about four, <laughs> four that had hit me before I came up. It was that's, horrible. That's a quadruple hold down, basically. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> that's, that's, I think that's the record on it so far. I, Someone's had a quadruple hold I down. And all, all I'm thinking is, you can hold your breath for much longer than you think. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Apparently, it's three times longer than you're supposed to be able to hold your breath. <laughs> That's yeah, brutal. going blue and oh, it was that was oh man, that but sounds... that was equipment failure as well. Yeah, 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 for sure. Last time wearing a rash vest was it? <laughs> no, I wear one all the time as well. Not that one though. Not that one. No, no, one with a proper pull in the bottom. No, yeah, yeah, <laughs> a drain. Yeah, I mean, it's it's been amazing to talk to you about like wooden boards and where you're going and like the eco side of it that you know sustainable boards and i think it's it's got to be like they can't you can't keep making boards like mass producing boards the way they they're doing at the moment so something's got to change and people are changing and the way they think about things are changing so i think the industry's got to catch up at some point soon well hopefully because if it doesn't it's 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 just going to fail anyway yeah because as you said you can't keep producing all this product because there are warehouses and warehouses now that are full of product that has never been sold yeah and it's just sitting there and it's 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 ridiculous that's why making a custom order for your customer is a much better way of doing it because you're not using up masses of resources mm -hmm. that are just sitting there 
you're making the product, they're taking it away, they're using it. Well, you think as well, you you know, say you can buy an off the shelf longboard, <coughs> excuse me, off the shelf longboard for six, seven hundred quid. And if you buy an off the shelf longboard for six, seven hundred quid, it may last you two, three, four years. Like you say, that one, fifteen hundred quid, yeah, it's two, three times the price, but it's gonna last you. You know, you've surfed that more you probably more than a lot of people would surf it in eleven years. And it looks pristine. And it looks still looks you could probably get another eleven years out of it by the look of it. You know, and it makes it makes perfect sense to buy something like that, especially uh, you know, I don't know I, I suppose there is people out there that make short wooden short boards and they're you know, that's what they're riding, that's what they're making and yeah. they're actually there is. I know I know a few people that do them. Um but yeah. Making something like that. But, I think but if having I was... said that, you know, you're saying about a, a long board's like six, seven, eight hundred pounds. Yeah. It was made with questionable materials. Yeah. Yeah, that's I, I hadn't questionable got to that, but yeah. working practices. <laughs> yeah. And then it's been transported halfway around the world. Yeah. With a massive profit margin because they've probably nailed it down to get these things made for the all included $120. Yeah, or 46 quid. <laughs> <laughs> they've, they've got that nailed down. You buy it for seven, seven fifty. Yeah. Then they charge you 100 quid for fins. Yeah. So is it really any better? No. It's, yeah. you, you've just... No, that, that's, that's where I was going. So, you know, the thing is, like... I can see the sense in buying a wooden board and the amount of times it will last you. And I mean, I do, I do, I have thought about it a lot. And I think next time I go to buy a board, I think it's going to be a wooden board. It might even be one of your wooden boards, but uh. whatever you get, you j just get one made for you by somebody that is involved with the the boards that they make. Yeah. You know, because there are there are a lot of people as well that are making boards, but they're not involved with the boards that they make. Yeah, 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 yeah for sure. They 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 will get them machined somewhere. They'll get somebody else to glass them. You know, they'll put yeah. their label on them, yeah. give them a quick rub, and you know that's their brand. Yeah, yeah. There's no, there's a lot happened. of that yeah, as no, well. I've seen that. Yeah, that is a bit soulless. That is very fact. Yeah. Soulless, yeah. So you know, I would say to anybody. Go to the person that's actually making the product and using it themselves. Yeah. So, yeah, you've also got a sister series of boards that you do. Yeah. So about seven, eight years ago, I was noticing that there were a lot more women starting to surf. And it always baffled me how there were no women's boards. Yeah. Or the women's boards that are available are just a usually thinned out, slightly narrower men's version scaled for a woman. Yeah. And I was noticing some particular difficulties that girls would have in the water. Um, they'd be on one type of board and they'd be able to surf it fine and then they'd go to something else and you'd think they should be fine but they were not getting on with it. So I sort of started thinking about it. And and the major difference is women's centre of gravity is a lot lower than a man's, about 15% lower. Yeah. Their paddling capacity is about 15 to 20% less efficient. So what I decided to do was to put some boards together that would basically deal with those issues. Yeah. So I came up with a few ideas and I'd made a few boards. And then as I've been seeing more and more women getting into surfing over the last few years, especially with the development of the clubs and various different associations now, yeah. and huge amounts of women coming into surfing. And I'm thinking, well, there's, there's nothing that's suitable for them, really. Yeah. They need to be having boards that are suitable for them. So I've put more time and effort into developing them further. And I've got a series of boards now, which all the girls that try them 
really like them. That's and really, they notice yeah. a big difference. Yeah. Because I've done some blind tests where I've had done some demo days, taken some boards, and just said, carry on with them. And they'll be, oh, I like this one, I don't like that one. I like this one, but I don't like that one. Yeah. Um, have you tried have you tried the female boards on men as well? Yeah. Do they find that the, the same? They don't like it or I'm not keen on it. Yeah? Yeah. See, that's really interesting because I think I don't think anyone's ever thought of it that much of like, oh, actually the board needs to be different. Yeah. And obviously obviously you haven't because you've done something that's now you're finding women to go in this is much better. This is much easier yeah. for me. And then a bloke's got a bloke goes on it and goes, "Oh, I don't like that. It's not right for me." Yeah. And they've they've had to put up and try and surf with what we've been surfing because they've been made yeah. for men. It's, well, for years you didn't have women's wetsuits. Yeah, you know, proper. I know wetsuits. women that still find tr- difficult yeah. sizing on wetsuits. Ninety-five percent of sports equipment is designed by men. Yeah. So all all other sports as well. Yeah. You know, e- even down to lots of kit and things like that yeah. it's not designed by women and then you find the companies that are designed by women when people actually find them they it's a total game changer for them yeah yeah so it's it's just um it's just a different way of looking at it and i know i'm saying that you know i'm a man and i'm designing stuff for women but i've looked at it in a completely different way you know i've looked at um studies from Loughborough University and things like that on paddle on you know strength yeah and different you know yeah so it, what's the main difference in the board then what's what has to be the main difference in the board for a woman's board to a man's board it's, it's thickness distribution yeah which is massive it's also the shape is slightly different right. so they're all completely different templates yeah and you look at them and you think oh it's not that different but those all those small differences yeah. add up to to a huge benefit. Yeah, yeah. Well, you you know you know from like anybody anyone surfing out there, you know a slightly more rocker or you know yeah. a slightly shorter tail or more pin tail yeah. or bigger nose. The, all these things make a difference yeah. anyway. And like, so it makes sense that someone would look, start looking at it and yeah. do it. I, I don't know why it's not been done before. And the, the, there's diff- the, the rail shapes are slightly different as well because women tend not to be as aggressive in the water and they tend to... A lot of men, no matter what board they're riding, they seem to be trying to fight the wave. Yeah. You very, very rarely get that with women. They just flow with it. Yeah. They just, you know, effortlessly want to go with what's there yeah. rather than actually battle against it yeah. yeah which is really quite interesting so there are a few little tweaks here and there but it's mainly the just the diff, different thickness distribution the size and um, where the width is in the board as well yeah Oh, that's amazing. It's amazing. And it's good to hear that they're going well. And yeah. like you said, you you did a test day not long ago with the uh, Shaka Surf women. And, yeah. Um, yeah, a couple of say, those tried yeah. them. And, they, and Daughters of the Sea magazine, it, they Daughters like the them. Sea, I've yeah. done them with Gower Women's. And I'm doing one with the Pembrokeshire Women's Surf on Saturday. Ah, nice. So are these 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 groups... Have the day they'll have the dates when you're coming down to test them. So if anyone wants yeah. to go and try them, they can go and try them yeah. there as well. Yeah, yeah. Oh. So so it's been it's been really good because it's quite noticeable that with the women surfers that they do seem to be really keen to be in a group to surf. Yeah, which is you know, and these people now. Have realised this, and they they're putting on these events for them, and it's great because it's one of those things where I've I've had girls come here and they say, oh well, you know, we were a bit unsure about going here and going there. They feel quite intimidated yeah. by, you know, what's already there. Yeah, and it's just about you know bringing them in and showing them that yeah, there's nothing to be afraid of, yeah. and then they can just start enjoying it. Yeah, yeah, I think I say. Uh a good rule to live by to yeah. be honest yeah. Every, everybody should just be able to enjoy it yeah 
That's that's the what surfing's all about. Yeah. Just enjoy it. Just enjoy it. Don't it take it too seriously. Doesn't matter what you're doing yeah. or how you're doing it. Just enjoy it. Yeah. That's it. Yeah. yeah. Well, well go, I think it's been an absolute pleasure to talk to you, is it? and it has. Really? Well, I'll tell you that. And then, <laughs> if you, and then uh, it's the same as when I walk away from him. <laughs> <laughs> right. What's the? Uh, where can people find you? Where can people find you online? Where can people get in contact if they want to get a wooden board made from you? Well, I'm on. Facebook, Instagram, and Unit 5, Crofty Industrial Estate, Swansea, SA4, 3RS. Well, that's that's full information. <laughs> uh, that's, that's... Look for the coolest, uh, um, what was it? Oh, I can't remember the brand, the van outside. The American van, or it's not yours. Oh, it was it parked out there. The murder van. The murder van. The murder van. It gives a P, what is it? Uh, uh, P. Oh, I can't remember, Paizo. Yeah, that's it. <laughs> is there a Ponty? No, it wouldn't be. It's a not Ponty, Pontiac. I couldn't Ponty, Ponty Priest. Ponty no. Priest. <laughs> yeah, somewhere around there. Anyway, look for a cool van. And, uh, uh, yeah, that's not mine. <laughs> that's There'll point. be another one next week. Yeah. Or does he just go through them? And... Oh, yeah. All oh, right, okay. Yeah. It's yeah. quite modern inside. It's obviously been done up. Yeah, they, they, they've they got a different one every day sometimes. Is that a conversion place? Or are they just, just like their motors? No, they, they, he deals with american motors and they actually like i said they build food trucks and oh, right, okay yeah so so that there's different vans and they can't be bothered parking them in their own yard so they put them outside oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well this is this is our other podcast american yeah. food trucks no, yeah. they, they put them out there because they like to take a photograph <laughs> ah, okay. it looks good in front of your place yeah yeah, right. yeah. well as you say man it's been an absolute pleasure cheers for talking to us and yeah. uh, cheers for telling us a bit about your experience with wooden boards and where you're going and how you're making the future better Board for Pete yeah <laughs> we can do that amazing amazing thank you man cheers well thanks for that Adam Pete them boards oh my god them boards that that little like it's not a workshop area was it it was the show area sort of thing where he had like boards on display and stuff like that they mm. were really uh there's something special to look at and i mean like you know like for handcrafted wooden surfboards they're quite reasonably priced priced as well also mentally light i was surprised how light they were um, yeah. I don't mean light compared to a you know a short board, but I mean for a long board, a nine foot, ten foot board, I couldn't believe the weight of them. I, I thought I was expecting a lot more. And man, for me, as somebody that doesn't long board, I would I would have one just for the beauty and the craftsmanship, craft personship, I guess that's yeah. what you say now. Um well, no, the board. craftsman, isn't he? Yeah. <laughs> I would have it just for the board as a piece of art. I don't know if I would go surf it, but I would have it just to display. If yeah, anything else, lovely. But yeah, like you said, he does like te- you know tester days and stuff like that where people can try them out. And really, that thing at the end with the the women surfboards and like he said, making them specifically for women because women are different in men as where they you know where their body weight is and everything like that so you know that's a really interesting point on it you didn't know because you had to bugger off to the toilet because you uh, drank too much coffee and were desperate to go <laughs> <laughs> i really was i had to go say hello to the spider webs <laughs> yeah <laughs> they were i think holding the building together <laughs> <laughs> yeah that was amazing but, no 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 it was really cool and, and it was yeah that was actually i remember it being it's not that it was a long day, but we did, like you said, we'd done two back to back. We interviewed Adam and pretty much got straight on with Laura from Shaka Surf and then yeah. went straight for a surf with Laura. Uh, yeah. So it was actually, it was a really, it was a memorable day because just everything was just really cool about it. And yeah, yeah no, I really enjoyed it. So yeah, you're right. I did miss that. But, um, and I know it's a random point of comparison, but there is such a thing as, you know, sports equipment that's made for men and women, which probably shouldn't come as a surprise to people. But there's the one that I do remember hearing about was golf balls. You get uh, female golf balls. And I think, you know, you get dimples in golf balls that helps the ball travel more efficiently through the air. I can't quite remember what it is. It's either something internally or it's the dimples are set different. So the ball travels. <laughs> just left the room, mate. I don't know I don't even know what you're on about. You're talking about <laughs> fucking golf balls, whatever. Yeah, all right, let's let's move yeah, on. Yeah, let's I've move got on. something to say. I've got yeah. something to say that we've not mentioned in a long time. Go on then. Bottle hops. 
Ah, uh, you're back on the training program, are you? I'm working again with uh, Biscuit Arms. Yeah. <laughs> old adrenaline athlete, Alan Bissaker, uh, Olympic yeah. strength and air conditioning coach. Nice. <laughs> um, he's, he's had a lot going on, actually. He's had a lot going on. Um, but he's kind of back on top of, of many things these days. And, you know, I, I was desperate. You know, we spoke about the program a lot and we've both been on it. Well, you were aware of it <laughs> and I was on I, it. No, I did um, it. I did it. But I, 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 I got much fitter and stronger when I was doing it, and uh, yeah. then I stopped. Then you stopped. I religiously was using that program, and it was obviously based for me for, on surfing, surf fitness, and it increased every other aspect of my life, especially when I was in the army. In terms of you know, there was no, I didn't lose no CV, but my running, everything was faster as a result of this training program, and and it was genuinely epic. And the point of it for me was surf fitness and that was huge but then you know all that crap happened with the army and i left and i've just not had the capacity dishonorably discharged dishonorably discharged <laughs> as Pete likes to say i've just not had the capacity to train and it's been breaking me but and i think it's harder when you know where you were fitness yeah. wise to you know where you are now so it's actually been pissing me off. So the last few weeks, I've, I've pulled my finger out a bit. I've turned into a bit of a civvy. I've just got lazy. I've lost my discipline. And I've started running again. I'm out on the bike. And I'm like, man, but for me, it's all about surfing. It's killing me that I'm running over eight-minute miles. It's kind of where I'm running now, which is devastating because normally I would run seven-minute miles. Six-minute abs! <laughs> but, <laughs> but I'm desperate to get back to it. So today... In fact, just before we we started recording, which is why I'm sweating my knuckles off still, uh, I just completed my first uh, program again with Alan, and oh, I finished on bottle hops, and I forgot how savage <laughs> they were. And I think when I finished training, I was doing each when I was doing sets of bottle hops, it was sets of like three minutes, maybe yeah. five reps of three minutes. Yeah. It was only like 50, 350 seconds I'd done there. And on the first one, oh my God, I nearly died. I was like, I forgot how horrible they were. And in fact, before we started recording, I had to run back down to the garage to grab my lights. And there's two bottles just still set up on the floor either side of the carpet, obviously where my arms were going over back and forth. And I looked at it and I felt sick. <laughs> <laughs> Look at him just <laughs> booted it across the room. Oh, they were brutal, they were. Um no, so, I, I, yeah. I, I might start doing that again now I'm a, a thinner version of myself and stuff like that. So uh, I might start getting back on the training, uh, get Alan to give me a ring and uh, see if he uh, wants to do some uh, some programming again if he's back on top of everything, seeing as he hasn't spoke to me for a million years. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know what, I'm though, calling you out, isn't... Biscuit Arms, on this show. I'm calling you out. <laughs> give me a phone call, man. <laughs> yeah, there you go. There you go, Alan. But the reason, again, why it was so important is because, like, for so many people, you know, we're not blessed with being able to surf every day. You know, yeah. once every couple of weeks, I, I can't, it's been at least a week and a half, I think, since I've had a surf. And there's not even a swell on the forecast. Well, actually, there is, but it's an onshore wind. I've got this amazing easterly swell coming, but it's all wind swell, and it's a straight east yeah. wind as well. So I'm probably not going to surf. But the point was that, you know, last time, if I went three, four weeks without surfing, I could go surf as if I, I'd surfed every day for months, you know? And that's yeah. kind of where it was at, and I'm desperate to get back to, especially ahead of, you know, the, the, the biggest or the largest wave garden in Europe opening. I'm going to have this playground on my doorstep that I work at and be too unfit to use it. That's a <laughs> devastating set of affairs. Do you find that Do you find that different, like, that you didn't actually realise while you were in the army of how much, how fit you actually were? You just took it for granted while you are in there because that was your fitness level. Mm. And then you've come out into civilian life and found actually it's... Not it, you know you can make it part of your daily routine, but it's not as much as your routine as it is while you're in the army. Yeah, there's I I, I think probably for a lot of people, you're like so fitness is part of your daily routine. You know at least at least three times a week. You know there's programmed PT, um, and the different types of PT. You know the army's getting quite good. They're really now buying into strength and conditioning and that sort of stuff. Um, but when it's part of your daily routine. But you're like, oh my god, I can't be asked doing fizz. You always feel better post fizz, always because yeah. you just feel better for having done it. So I guess when you don't have a choice but to do it, 
you you don't appreciate the benefits of it at the time. Yeah. But then on yeah. top of that, I was then doing you know my island program. But I would I do my own fizz as well. Probably like a lot of squaddies and a lot of disciplined squaddies will go and do their own fizz. But it's all about getting massive or whatever. <laughs> but um, for me, it was about surfing and everything was tying back to that. So yeah. it's not that I don't think it's because of my civvy lifestyle now. I'm not. I haven't been doing fizz. It's just because everything's been mental and I've just not had the time or the capacity to go do it. But I would have loved it to still be part of my daily routine. And I think really summer last year is when I stopped running and yeah. got cold, got miserable, and I just couldn't be asked. And now it's got a bit warmer. I'm like, I need to pull my finger out. I'm desperate to do it. I feel better for having done it. So yeah, yeah. I want to get back on top of it for that reason. And I don't really think it's about my job of that because like i say a lot of my f the, the, i spent 16 months shielding as you know during covid yeah. and i'd never been fitter until the, after that's when i started working with alan then i was fitter but it was nothing to do with that lifestyle i think i'm i'm naturally quite fit anyway but i have a i generally would have a resting level and that's still normally quite a fast pace for distance running but i, I am i'm way outside that now yeah. just need to get back to it i went for a run earlier no you didn't I did. It was raining and I ran to the van from the house. <laughs> oh, right, okay. <laughs> Should say he parked his van 17 miles away. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. That's all right. I don't know what your fuss is about running. Just turn up and do it. That's what happens, isn't it? That's no, what that's I what I do. But I, you know, my yeah. only thing is I have to have music. I hate running oh, without yeah. music. Kills yeah. me. Because then yeah. if I'm running without music, that is PT. You know, that's yeah. not me doing my own thing. That's PT. <laughs> yeah. You're running, uh, like, I, I no, running without music is like, oh, it's painful. But then you get that opposite thing. Like, sometimes you get a track that comes on that builds up to being really fast and, like, get to the end <laughs> uh, of the track and you're like that. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus, what happened? <laughs> <laughs> well, that, that reminds me, actually, when I went for a run last week, I was at Special Case, and it was the first run back. And I've, I've lost the charger from a Garmin watch, which I normally yeah. set all my runs on. And that's got loads of music on it. So I had to dig out my old Apple watch, which, ha which happened to have some charge in it. So I was like, oh, I'll use that. And I had the charger with me. And um, I'd remember it having loads of music on it before, but I've not used it for like two years, probably, since I had the Garmin. Yeah. So put it on, music played, happy days. Started the run, song finished. And that just stopped. I was like, what? So I hit play again, hit shuffle, hit play. And it had loads of songs on the playlist, but it played the same song. I was like, oh, that's odd. <laughs> so I let it play. And then the same thing happened. And I realized, because it had been updating, it's only re-downloaded the one song. So the whole <laughs> run, <laughs> I just had to keep hitting play again. And I just gave up. So then I'm running with no sound. But because I'm wearing, I was using AirPods and they've got the, um, what do you call it, noise, noise cancelling on. And yeah. they're quite good on AirPods, the noise cancelling. So it's like, I'm running with no music, but there's no ambient noise either. It was the most <laughs> surreal thing. Genuinely felt like I'd been taken hostage. Oh, man. <laughs> That's what it felt like. Uh, well, um, yeah. What else have you been up to? Anything else? There's, do you know what? There's a lot going on at, uh, at Lost Shore at the minute. Pretty exciting week. Um, we have got... Um, when's this coming out? I can say Sunday. we've got the some of the the premium accommodation pods uh their armadillo is the company are turning up um this week and I'm, I'm super stoked to go film that and i've been down to their factory and seen them last week and mate honestly they're insane they're so cool uh, like i just i, I want one <laughs> I, I don't care where i have it i just want one and just... what's cool about it is that the company it's a local company but everything's done in house from start yeah. to finish literally like the wooden materials turn up and they just do it all there from the planning to the cut into the final the touches but i was thinking they'd missed a trick there because i like could because everything's there it's almost like flat pack and they yeah. just start and they do everything but they could have like a demo one where everything's sat there as a flat pack and you get to try and build it yourself do you know what i mean you <laughs> see how well you could do it compared to them <laughs> like just the ikea imagine... version <laughs> yeah i just imagine all i would do is move the pile from here to there yeah <laughs> and, still be in the and not pile. look at the instructions <laughs> <laughs> yeah well, I've been, I think I said on the buy me coffee, but not on the main one. I've been on another podcast. and uh, You have? 
Yeah, so spoke to John from North Swell Podcast, who is going to be on our podcast. We interviewed him when we were up there. Um, God knows when it will come out, though, because we've got to put him in some sort of order yet. But yeah, and he does this little thing that he started doing, which is like a surf capsule, a bit like mm. a Desert Island Disc sort of things, where you pick three things for your surfing. Uh, it was quite fun, actually. It made me uh, think. I haven't done that for ages. And, um, Bloody hell. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, no, it really made me think of like what what sort of things I'd put in my surf capsule. And, uh, yeah, so that's that's coming out at some point soon. Um, I'll share that on the socials when it comes out. Oh, and, that uh, was one of the things you'd put in your surf capsule. You'll have to listen to it and find out. Okay, I will. Yeah. yeah. So you don't want maybe another podcast then? Yeah. I uh yeah I put you no I put you just buried you in the capsule and chucked you in the ground that was it <laughs> put you in room get rid of you. <laughs> yeah yeah no it's no it's really good fun actually so yeah that's well worth a listen to um yeah so that's been good and yeah I can't remember I was going to say something else but you completely threw me I think he's going to do oh you no at I, know, some I know what you were going to say you were going to say look forward to our new feature it's three things you can bring and put in a surf capsule <laughs> <laughs> yeah so no that's the other thing so we are going to do some um more episodes because we've had loads of requests for people asking for episodes when it's just you and I chatting because they really like them go down well and we're going to introduce some features and stuff so any ideas we might do something like listeners stories as well um so yep. something like that and you know have like stories about local people or, or your stories and you know there's all sorts of ideas that we're throwing around at the moment so we're going to do that and it's probably going to be on average every third episode or something like that mm. will be just Mitch and I talking so if you're interested in that if you've got any stories like great surf stories kooky moments or you know epic surf trips or anything you want to say either send us a voice note or if you don't want to send us a voice note type it out and we'll read it out if you send us a voice note and you sound a bit me, we'll, uh, <laughs> we'll read it out for <laughs> or, or you. If you if you sent us a voice note but we read it out, that maybe tells you you're a bit dull. <laughs> <laughs> not that no, I'm saying my you, voice you, is not. If you dull, go for the effort of sending us a voice note, we'll just play it out. And uh, yeah, if it's if 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 it's a good story, if it's uh, not a good story, then we probably won't play it out. But um, yeah, no sea bombs. And if you want to make your story sound even better, just apply surf etiquette of wave sizes, the metrics that people use in surfing for wave size sizes, and just lie about the story. Just make it up entirely, <laughs> same as surf size, wave size. Yeah. <laughs> well, all right then. On on that one, you, you look you look forward to the new questions coming on the end of the uh, oh, the yeah. northeast. I think we've had one with Andy, didn't we? We started that. Yeah, we the had first one. one that came so, out. Yeah, yeah. They, 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 they're really fun. They're really fun. Yeah. So I'm looking forward to more. We did remember yeah. what the other question was. We mentioned. I'm not going to say it now. We'll, we'll save yeah. it for the next trip because actually, I think it's a really, really good question. It's I a bit love divisive. The fact. Yeah, and 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 it will do similar to the. <clears throat> excuse me. It will do similar. <laughs> <laughs> that keeps happening. Yeah. It will do similar to this. Um, how big is a six foot wave? Question. Yeah. <laughs> What's going on yeah. with my voice? I don't know. But I'm so glad. I'm question. so glad that I thought of it. And then we. I said it in the van. I was like, "Oh, that's a really good question, actually." And then I forgot it, and you remembered it, and you went, "Yeah, because I remembered it. I'm having it as my question now." I was like, "Oh, great!" Yeah, but to All be right, fair, <laughs> you've forgotten it three times since then, so it's fully <laughs> yeah. mine now. But this will create the same sort of divide, or it will make people answer in such a political way, a bit like the three yeah. foot, six foot thing. So yeah, yeah that that will be cool. But that's going to happen on the next trip, which is a while away. Yeah. yeah, so yeah, we got uh, one more Wales one left after this, which is Mark Vaughan, and he'll be out next, and then we'll be into the northeast ones and the ones of me and Mitch jabbering nonsense of whatever we've done. Uh, I look like I've got a gap in my work schedule in the next couple of weeks, so if there is any surf, I shall be going. Uh, you, also, no you, also, you also look like you've got a gap in your teeth. <laughs> <laughs> Have I? Yeah. Oh, well. <laughs> well probably have. <laughs> I did have, yeah. Um, yeah, so I'll, I'll be going surfing. That'll be nice. That'll be an experience. Uh, oh, if yeah. not, if there's no surf, when I've got that gap, I think I may even book in at the wave, you know, and just go there. Because I haven't surfed properly for so long. I mean, I know we surfed in the northeast, but the, the swell was a bit crappy and, it, you know, yeah, it was good fun. And proper surf. Yeah, the guys I saw the guys from True North Surf uh, Club were down at the Wave as well on uh, oh, cool. the last couple of days. They spent a few days down there. Looked like they had an epic time. So, yeah, that's coming out next. Don't forget, like and subscribe on YouTube, on Instagram, Facebook, 
Spotify, Apple, whatever. Leave us a review on Spotify or Apple and make sure you like, comment and subscribe on YouTube. TripAdvisor, Airbnb, anywhere. We're, we're, on, <laughs> we're on all of it. Yeah, and, cash uh, donations if accepted. If, if, you're, <laughs> if you're the dude, if you're the dude who was surfing the wave, I want to say last weekend, and you had just listened to the Andy Haddon episode... Um, and then you happen to bump into him in the water started going are you that guy from the podcast uh, drop us a drop us a DM we want to chat to you <laughs> yeah that happens Andy got recognised from the podcast <laughs> <laughs> amazing <laughs> so that was cool that was cool <laughs> drop us a message if that's you <laughs> cool alright then guys cheers guys girls everyone thanks for listening buy me coffee go over there and see you soon cheers <laughs>